yeah, I was 15 in high school hiring people off Upwork. There's this one guy, his name is Bennett. He lives mm -hmm. in India. We've had a relationship for seven years, just chatting on no. Skype. And I would send him my math homework. I'd take a picture of it or like send him a login link to like my math homework. He would knock it out like 25 cents a question, bro. Like that's how I got through college. I watched this Gary V video and he was like, get on TikTok. But before you get on TikTok, research your niche, right? Yeah, okay. And like watch content for a week and then start creating. Like if your post gets a hundred views, like some people are like, oh, the algorithm shadow ban. It's like, no, your content's just bad yeah yeah <laughs> right so like do some market research savage right <laughs> i have my girlfriend doesn't watch this <laughs> she's making all our videos at the moment she's for coming mate thank you for coming. having me bro thank you for having me so guys we've got steven yeah fucking cheers cheers bro cheers we're in uh we're in bali by the way which i'm sure we'll speak about but um wanted to get steven on the podcast because as you guys will know this channel is all about helping people in the SaaS world helping them get into SaaS. And when I chatted to you, I just thought there'd be no one better to sort of talk about your journey going into eventually what what became. But we won't get into that yet because I know that you were really keen to talk about what your inspiration was to get into what you do now. 100%. So do you want to just brush over like a brief what you do right now <clears throat> and then go right back to the start and just talk about what inspired you to, to get into that? Sure, yeah. So right now I'm uh, building mobile apps and I also have a digital marketing agency. We do short form content for a bunch of different brands. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. I'll get into the story about how I started each, but yeah, mobile apps and uh, marketing agency. Yeah, nice. And why mobile apps? Like what, what drew you to that? So when I was a young, a young kid, well, first of all, I grew up in, you know, my dad was a huge inspiration to me. He was a sales guy. So, you know, I kind of grew up in that environment where I was always trying to sell something. I was yeah, going nice. door to door around the neighborhood and like what, selling. What sort of stuff? Just dumb shit, bro. Like rocks. Anything, or like yeah. Anything, dude. <laughs> like as a young kid, just trying to sell whatever. Get my hands on a couple bucks. But so that really inspired me. Like seeing him work and the way he talked to people and the way he was like selling. Like, I don't know. There's something about it. I always wanted to be a salesman. I knew it from a, yeah. a young age. So I was always selling stuff. And then I watched this movie called The Social Network. Yeah. About yeah. Mark Zuckerberg yeah, and yeah. Facebook. And I think that's the origin story of so Spot many entrepreneurs it. these days. Um, but. I watched that movie and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like I have to learn yeah, how to yeah. code. So immediately after I watched that, I think I was like 14, I went on YouTube and typed in how to build a website, Shit. built my first website. Nice. So shitty. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I got better and better and better. Just taught myself on, on YouTube and, uh, then started to put ads on the websites and yeah. you know, there were ads there. And then I was like, all right, how do I get traffic to these websites? I got to get it to work. Yeah. Right. And then, so I learned social media, Twitter. Yeah, so yeah. we used to run massive Twitter meme pages back in the day. We would send traffic to the websites and make money on Google AdSense. And just through Twitter. Yeah, just through Twitter. And so what we would do, so like if you if you run an ad, so like we try to get like clickbait like type articles, right? Yeah, so of like course. cheerleaders, Kim Kardashian, su super just cars, to get and stuff clicks, like this. Yeah. 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 But like the problem is the CPC on those is super low. Super low, yeah, yeah. So what we would do is we would do those types of articles like Kim Kardashian breaks the internet or whatever. And then in the blog post we talk about insurance, car insurance, whatever. So it would like oh, so it would trick the, it, yeah. It would trick the uh the AdSense system and it would show insurance ads. Yeah. So yeah. those clicks were like way more expensive. Super high, yeah. So the CPC like skyrocketed, but we did that for a little bit and then Google like flagged it. They're like, hey, course, yeah. you can't do this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was, so we had, a, I had a transition and uh, I thought it would always be cool to like promote my own product instead yeah, of like other yeah. products. Cause we would do Google AdSense and then affiliate marketing stuff. And I'll promote other people's products on these websites, but I had no control over their product or the user no, experience. No, no. So then I found mobile apps and I launched my first game Again, a really bad game, but um, taught myself how to code uh, with Swift, Apple's native yeah, language, yeah, I know, I know. and then started building mobile apps from there. Yeah, I, I think it's, I actually, the social net network didn't inspire me to start. But if I'm ever feeling shitty about the software I'm building or just like how stuff is going, I'll, I'll watch that movie yeah and bro the feeling that you get while you're watching that you like getting pumped up like thinking about coding in your bedroom and launching to all those people but it's interesting that you you went through that experience at quite a young age of like let's just say like hacking like growth hacking to figure yep. out how to get money yep. and how did that like the lessons that you learned there then sort of go on to 
the the next step of the journey because it must have taught you a lot it serves me to this day man like the power of social media is insane and you know those skills that you learn when you're super young like with twitter accounts sending traffic to a website you learn yeah how to get people to click on something on the internet which is in my opinion like nowadays the most powerful tool you can have attention yeah it's like if you can get attention you've you've got options then right and the thing is it's like unlimitedly scalable the internet yeah, yeah, yeah. is so vast it's so getting bigger yeah and there's no cap to you know how many people you can reach nowadays so it's it's insane those skills are necessary yeah. today um, and what did um what was the next step like you said that you started to dabble into mobile apps the first one was pretty shitty and what, <laughs> what happened next after that so the first one was pretty shitty but like i didn't know it was shitty back in the day yeah. right like i'd build a mobile app my friends were playing it i was like this is the coolest thing ever yeah yeah like i had my name on the app store and then so I built another one and I called that one Grid. And this was like my first decently successful app. So I did the same sort of thing. I, uh, I paid all these Twitter meme pages to promote Grid. And, you know, the, the creative that I had was like insane. And yeah. I, I think I, I maybe had like two and a half grand in my bank account. I spent it all promoting Grid. On, on these Twitter on meme tw pages, yeah, yeah. Twitter meme, but. but like it blew up. I got like fifty thousand downloads uh, yeah. in a day, and that was my first ten k month. Was yeah, with wow. the mobile app. Wow. It was just a simple little puzzle game. How old like, were you then, uh, dude? I was like fifteen. Fuck. Yeah, so that was my first ten k month, and uh, dude, I thought it was the shit. You couldn't tell me anything back then. Yeah. My teachers, you know, my parents, like I was like, I thought I was, you know, the, on my way. <laughs> well, internet money at that such a young age, you're sitting there looking the ten g's in your bank account. Like, yeah. Cut, probably can't even comprehend that sort of money and what you would do with it. So you're gonna think you're the, you're the shit. Exactly, and I was so dumb back then, man. Like, I was so young and I was like, I was just looking at 10 grand and like, I didn't reinvest any of it no. back into the business. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, mind blowing to me now and I'm so stupid. I just like, I had a girlfriend back then, took her out for sushi, yeah, you yeah. know, got her clothes and all this stuff, was paying for, my own, paying for my own gas. Like, I thought yeah. I was the man, you know what I mean? But looking back, like, and that taught me a valuable lesson. Like, I feel like yeah, those, yeah. those L's, like, now I reinvest and, like, now I know how to, you know, navigate yeah. um, those big months that I have or, like, you know, when money comes in, you have to reinvest in what's working, reinvest in yourself. Um, yeah. So it taught me a valuable and lesson. I feel like nothing teaches you faster than losing money. Yeah. When you lose money, that shit hurts hard because you get a taste of where you want to be and, like, that, that, that view into what life could be like. Absolutely. And then you get slapped back down. So you're like, shit, how do I get back there? Yeah. But how do I avoid losing again? Because that feeling is... So no, that's... I definitely agree with that. And, and what what was the next step after that? You had had an initial success. You had a taste. You had, that, again, that like growth hacking yeah. experience. What did you then go on to? Well, so it was cool. So I like realized that this is almost like a recurring source of revenue. Because people kept playing grid over yeah, course, and over yeah. and over again. So like I had that 10K month. And then it dipped down to like maybe like six or seven, then four, then but like it levels out and you kind of have like a steady income from mobile yeah, apps. Yeah, nice. So I was like, all right, this is the key. Like mobile apps are the key. So I built another app. I built Wordle and uh, so I built Wordle and then, you know, I promoted it for a little bit, but it didn't have the same yeah. sort of success that Grid did. People didn't play it for as long. So I kind of let it go and uh, let the project die out. It was getting maybe one to two downloads a day. Yeah. And then a year ago, yeah. Another developer builds a game called Wordle, but it's only available on Best browser, time. right? So that game went mega viral. And when people look for a game, they type in Wordle, right? When you look for a game, you go to the app store. So they type yeah, in yeah, Wordle and then mine shows up, which was insane, bro. Yeah. Like, and the moment I realized it too, I was like, I was at my parents' house. It was, it was late December and I logged into my app store connect dashboard. Yeah. And I saw like 300,000 downloads. I was like, whoa, one of my apps just blew up. Like what happened? And I saw that it was Wordle, this game that I had built like six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, these are fake downloads. Like, this is a bot. Someone's, so someone's spamming you. Someone's yeah, trolling trying to me. Take it down. Yeah. yeah, someone's trolling me or something. And then, you know, I Googled Wordle. And then a New York Times article pops up. It says, Wordle is a love story. And I was like, what the? <laughs> There's no way they're writing about <laughs> is my game. Is it spelling game. different? Is it? It's the well, exact same. Exact same. Yeah. Exact same. Because I wasn't, because he, Josh Wordle, who created that, he's with a U. So I wasn't sure whether his was with a U, but exact same spelling. Yours is just on the native place where people exactly. go to when they're looking for a game. Exactly. So that was crazy. You know, I uh, I realized it that day, and in my parents, you know, in my parents' house in, in December, I was like, "This is insane! Like, yeah. what's happening here?" And I didn't know the scale of it yet. 
right? Because it was just the beginning. It had like 300,000 downloads in like five days. So I tweeted at Josh. I was like, hey, man, your game is sending like a ton of traffic to, to mine on the App Store. Yeah. I'm earning some money from it. And I reached out to him and he was like, cool. Yeah, DM me. Um, and I was like, bro, I want to donate like the proceeds that I get. So yeah, let's, nice. let's talk about it. Let's chop it up. And he shot me his email. And then we kind of went back and forth. And um, I went back to L.A. Uh, like a week later and you know it just kept going man like, yeah, yeah i looked when i found out it had like three hundred thousand downloads by the time i got to la it had 1.5 million and then it just Shit. kept going like the next day it got a million downloads in a day and then two mil like it was insane i was like holy shit i didn't realize the scale of it yeah it's almost it's interesting isn't it because like in the social network they get to that point don't they yeah where it's just yeah people sign up every single day yeah. and it must have been that surreal moment where you're like so I've sort of experienced it with my SaaS when, well, first of all, you have moments like you get your first customer, you get it when you speak to your customers, yeah. you get it when you hit a certain revenue, you get into a territory where you've never been in before. How did that feel? Because for me, it's scary at times because you're like, I don't want to make the wrong step because so much is on the line now. Right. Yeah, this was a bit different. Um, I didn't. I didn't know what to do at all. Like I, w I was almost like paralyzed by it. Yeah. You're almost paralyzed by like that type of growth, right? Because like you said, you don't want to make the wrong step. And like, no, I didn't no. even touch the app. I just kind of let it sit there um, because it was so out of nowhere. I didn't really know what to do with it. And yeah. I just got hit up left, right and center by like people trying to invest, people trying to, you know, interview me and stuff like that. Yeah, like, it was yeah. insane, bro. So I just, I just kind of let it, let it do its thing. I, th I think one of the core, cool I'm just going to read off now. So like, these are the podcast notes, which... I don't feel like we're really going to use, but yeah. like just before it, I just thought this would be really cool to read off. So like a bit of research about Steven, built Wordle at 18. Within a month, it went from one to 50,000 downloads a day. And in fact, you said at points it was getting like a million downloads a day. I think that was the peak, like a million a day. Yeah. And then you, you downloaded the, the large amount of money to the charity, which we can speak about. As a result, you got featured in Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Rolling Stone, BBC. You've now launched Puff Count, which we'll t touch upon. Reading that, I feel like it would be very easy to assume you've got a young, you've got a young kid, success at a young age. It probably would have gone to his head. He would have been a douche. But when we <laughs> we like met up over dinner, yeah, and like straight away, how level grounded you are and how humble you are was really inspiring or what you know i didn't really i had no idea about you to be honest i'd heard a word all but i think it's cool how and hopefully you'll be able to talk about this to like people listening that those core principles that you learn from your mistakes and your journey you should never waver from those because when right. you waver that's when you lose your integrity right and i feel like you've stuck to that quite well how, how does how do you look at that and how I, do you apply it to what you do i mean dude i'm just blessed you know, I have no reason to let it get to my head, like God's plan. Yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up going to church. My, my parents raised me um, to not be, you know, I don't know, uh, like boastful or anything yeah, like yeah. that. So, dude, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to be here. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm living my dream life. And, you know, I feel like this is an opportunity for me. And like this happened for a reason. Yeah, yeah. And it was to inspire younger people to like take a bet on themselves, start a company, start whatever they're doing and like, I don't know, man. I feel like that's why this happened to, yeah. to give me a platform to, to speak to younger entrepreneurs and inspire them and, you know, yeah, encourage them to, to do their own thing. And what did you on the charity point, just explain like what was that charity and, and what led you to, to giving that money away? Yeah. So I spoke with Josh, Josh Wardle, and I was like, Hey man, I'm getting a decent amount of revenue from, from all this traffic. So I'd love to, I'd love to donate this. Right. Because you know, I'm, <laughs> This wasn't supposed to happen. No. Nah. So uh, we got together. We connected. His partner had worked at this charity in Oakland, which oh, nice. is pretty close to me in LA. It was called Boost Oakland. So um, set up a time and went over there and was able to donate fifty thousand nice. dollars, which was one of the highlights of my life for sure. Yeah. But um, no, man, just happy to give back. Like, dude, I'm so blessed, and you know, my family's taking care of me, and you know, I've I've had the success, so I I just want to give back as as much as i can and that's that's my goal even with yeah. puff count like that's not a money play for me that's no. that's a give back that's a do good that's a you, you know like i want to make i want to make an impact in the world yeah, yeah. type thing which is crazy as an, as an entrepreneur like you can make such a big impact in the world 100%. like 
my games have been downloaded millions of times, puff count 300,000 times. Like you can change so many people's lives yeah. with tech and with SaaS and with stuff like that. So it's it's crazy, man. Yeah, um, you've sort of touched upon it there, but what attracts you about SaaS? Like why why is that, and particularly relevant now, like why is that the business model and route that you've chosen? Dude, it's a no brainer these days. I mean, e-com is great, but you have to ship products. It's a pain in yeah. the ass. There's, there's overhead, Logistics. but with SaaS, you build something, you build a SaaS one time and you can sell it 40 million times. Yeah. You build it once and you sell it forever. So like that's intriguing to me and it's it's recurring revenue, right? I'm a big guy in like monthly recurring revenue, like how much money can I get paid each month guaranteed? Yeah. And like if you can set yourself up, if you can get like a decent baseline uh, monthly recurring revenue on your SaaS, you're set for life, bro. Yeah. And you can take risks at that point. Yeah. So like that's what uh, inspired me to build Puff Count and build it as a micro SaaS. It's only four dollars a month, but at scale, okay, you can yeah. get that monthly recurring revenue yeah, pretty course. high. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it just it just makes sense. The business model just makes sense. And so you spoke about SaaS, like especially now, it's never been easier to start a SaaS business. Hundred percent. Recorded a video, it'll go out before this. Was like anyone can start a SaaS business. Here's how. Yeah. Just telling people with AI, particularly now, but no code builders. How did you, moving on like after Wordle, you've mentioned Puffcat, how did you utilize the knowledge, the growth hat knowledge to to scale Puffcat? And then maybe we can touch on juiced after that. Yeah, so whenever I build a product, I always think marketing first. That's yeah. just how my brain works from, you know, when I was a kid running the Twitter accounts, marketing first, will this get clicks? Is this marketable? And that's kind of my starting point for, for any product, any SaaS, whatever it may be. So. I was in college and you know I got addicted to vaping, all my friends got addicted to vaping, and I knew this was gonna be a huge problem for a long time. So I asked my buddy, I was like, bro, like, how many times do you think we hit these vapes every single day? And he was like, I have no idea. And I was like, all right, that's, that's, that's a it. business, right? Yeah. Like tell people how much they're smoking, uh, kind of a, a habit discovery type thing, and then also you know have the app help them quit. So that was the idea. Um, outsourced a team in Eastern Europe to, to build out the app. I got the UI done from another team and kind of, you know, put the pieces together and uh, and built Puff Count, bro. And yeah. then I uh, started promoting it on TikTok, which is, we'll, we'll dive into that too. But um, I definitely wanted to build it as a SaaS and kind of have this freemium model. Yeah. And then, you know, like a small monthly payment to get all the extra features. Yeah, like sure. The quick coach, uh, tell you how much nicotine you're smoking, all that stuff. My, my journey was pretty similar. I had uh, a friend who, so I run a SEO agency, and he said, oh mate, I've seen in the community a few times, people have been asking like, how do you improve SEO on Squarespace? Because my travel blog's on Squarespace. Right. And he was like, I see this all the time, and immediately that like clicked. As soon yeah. as you see that, you piece two and two together, you see a demand, you see a problem, mm -hmm. and you see a gap in the market. 100%. And you just, I, I was similar, my team's based in India, I've got super, super lucky with them. How did you approach Let's say like there's, there's someone listening now. You, you've got a you've got a SaaS idea. You've identified a problem. What do you recommend to those people to as soon as possible go from zero to one? You said start with sales and marketing first, but what would you outline? What is that framework look, look the like? The second you have an idea, get out your notes, a Google Doc, whatever it may be, and just brain dump everything, like everything about the topic. Do research and then sit on that idea. Like I typically sit on ideas for a couple of weeks to a month, and if if I wake up every morning or I go Keeps to sleep in, yeah. every night and I keep thinking about it, like That's you have it, to yeah. take action. Yeah, You have to take action on that idea and you have to build it. And like you said, nowadays, building a SaaS or building any sort of business now is like so easy. Yeah, with no yeah. code tools, with Upwork, um, outsourcing, you know, out of the country, you can get it done relatively cheap. Yeah, And you can make that business idea come to life. And then with TikTok and short form content and organic marketing and the reach that people have just out of it's nowhere. Crazy. Bro, the sky's the limit. Like you said, yeah. like anyone can do this. Mine was Facebook groups. Yeah. Like I got, um, mine's B2B, so I guess the scale isn't as, as large. But I, I remember I put it on Facebook groups, a waiting list, and a guy shared it on his email list and it got like 150 signups. I, and I think I was in Italy at the time and I showed my girlfriend. I was like, again, I thought someone was spamming the website. <laughs> yeah. Like, because it was just a contact form, the waiting list. I was like, something's going on. And then I went through and I was like, no, these are actual people. Mm -hmm. Um. Coming back to a point that you, you spoke about starting off with sales and marketing, again, a, a YouTube video I did before was like the uncomfortable truth for developers. Yeah, There's gonna be so many people 
watching this in the world in SaaS that are developers building a product. Right. And I said to them, the reason you're not going to be successful is because all you're doing is writing lines of code. You may have a product, but what the hell are you going to do to get it out there in front of people, speak to your customers, get actual feedback? Right. And what I think is super cool with what you did, you find like, yeah, an MVP and just scale the shit out of it. Let's get in front of as many as people. Exactly. Get that feedback, get that feedback loop churning to then build the next feature, build the next product. Well, it's like, and you're at, you're, you're spot on, right? Like everyone has their skill set. Yeah. So if you're a great developer, outsource a great marketer. I feel yeah. like my skill set is marketing. I know how to get, you know, products to go viral. I know how to get my product in front of people. I outsource the development. I let someone else handle that. Yeah. Right? So just like building a team is so crucial. And like as I've grown up and like become, you know, more of an entrepreneur and like built more businesses, like that is kind of what my focus has been is is hiring good talent. And I yeah. think that's how you take yourself to the next level cuz like early on, bro, like I had a couple bad experiences with like business partners and I was like, dude, I'll just do it on my own like yeah. this. But like, pretty similar, yeah. You come to realize that, like, t to really make a huge impact, like, you need a team. You need yeah. people on your side. You need people working for you. Um, so hiring is is crucial. How um, it's a crucial skill. I'd imagine. So like, I I can't really code myself. A little bit of HTML, CSS, it would break in a <laughs> right. couple of days. Um, how would you approach? Because again, for those people that can't develop, how would you approach picking that team, picking that developer, finding people that aren't gonna because developers can be, they can run off, they can do X, Y, and Z, especially when you've got no understanding of development. It's a skill set that you have to acquire over time. Hiring people is a skill. I was 15 years old and I was hiring, you know, <laughs> I was hiring people off Upwork to do my homework. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> Where I- Where did that 10 Gs go straight into Yeah, Upwork for real. For... No, but seriously, like, yeah, I was 15 in high school hiring people off Upwork. There's this one guy, his name is Bennett. He lives mm -hmm. in India. We've had a relationship for seven years, just chatting on no. Skype. And I would send him my math homework. I'd take a picture of it or like send him a login link to like my math homework. He would knock it out like 25 cents a question, bro. Like that's how I got through college. I outsourced all of <laughs> my schoolwork crazy. to Upwork. But that taught me such a valuable skill. Yeah. It taught me how to hire people. Yeah, yeah. And like how to communicate with people online, especially outside the country and like how to pay people, how to set goals for, for freelancers. and. That is a valuable skill that you learn over time. But yeah, I mean, Upwork is the best place to start if you're looking for talent um, until you build that network yeah. and then you trust people within your network. Yeah. But like, dude, freelance is the way to go. Super cheap, um, you get stuff done. My developers off Upwork, um, my best writers off Upwork, and people have this picture in their head. They think like, you know, you've got this Indian guy working in this dark room, you don't know whether you can trust them, you don't know what's gonna happen. When you find those gems and you yeah. learn how to find that, it can be crazy and yeah. they work harder than people in the US and the UK, they want it more and often, culture is a difference but when you na nail that cultural difference, it's it's crazy. Bro, they're such hard workers and like, I don't know, there's a, there's a million different hubs, like the US is great but people get lazy almost yeah, like I yeah. feel like a lot of US workers like they're like silent quitting or whatever it may be like yeah. another like you said in other cultures they're two like two jobs developers with exactly, two jobs yeah. exactly but yeah. like other places people are so hungry and they're equally as talented yeah you just have to find them definitely you just gotta find them and then you so you've you spoke a lot about your principles of getting started what goes into getting a product viral because you've got pretty good track record at this point yeah and maybe that ties onto juiced and, and what you do there I think it all goes back to the, like the product idea. Is it marketable? Yeah. Is it a viral product? Does it help people? Does it provide value? And if you have all those things, you're good to go. Yeah. Right. Like, TikTok is insane, man. TikTok, TikTok pays my rent. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it costs zero dollars to make a TikTok, and like, it pays my rent. Like, I just post a video uh, about Puff Count, and then drive downloads, and people uh, buy the subscription. Yeah. The and it's monthly dollars. recurring revenue. So like, yeah. there's no advertising cost yeah my customer acquisition cost is zero you know what I mean yeah, so yeah. it's like if you have a product especially a SaaS product and it goes viral on TikTok and you can do that over and over and over again you will you'll be yeah. set and I feel like it's um so like again those that don't have as much knowledge that is particularly that can be done so well on b2c products it can also be done on b2b maybe not necessarily through TikTok yeah. I use Facebook groups a friend of mine, shout out Louis, who's done all the product design on, on SEO space. He did it via Reddit. 
he had a thread go, um, he had like a post go viral on Reddit, post go viral on Twitter. So that principle that you're talking about, it doesn't have to be applied to just TikTok. TikTok's a fucking amazing route for B2C. Right. But to anyone out there, if you've got that idea, I, I would agree with Stephen, like find a platform that allows you to build an audience that are, where you can leverage that audience for, for free. Again, mine is through Facebook, yours through tis, um, TikTok. 100%. Whatever platform is your bread and butter, wherever your customers live, just attack that platform hard and don't give up and you'll yeah. eventually figure out like the key to it. And the great thing about all these platforms is they're so interchangeable nowadays. It's yeah. so, like you post a TikTok, you can post it on Instagram, YouTube Shorts, Pinterest, Twitter, like you name it, you can post it everywhere. And so you can start to build your company from like six different places and it's just, it's insane the amount of yeah. reach you can have. And it also like, you, you bet, for me, you build like um you've got that multi-touch approach approach right and you develop resilience in your business because so for example for my travel blog my girlfriend did a post on there in Italy it was a storm room it went super super viral like two posts got 30 million views um, we got featured in like different recent went in the Daily Mail and stuff like that we then went semi-viral on Instagram 40,000 followers on Instagram that was really cool but then our TikTok just dropped off the face of the earth yeah and yeah. we're getting like, we've got 220,000 followers, something like that, and we're getting like 1,000 views. It's crazy, but because we've got the blog and Instagram, we've built that resilience so that right. we've still got that audience. Right, 100%. Yeah, no, it's it's important to be on every platform, and like you said, like even if you have a large TikTok following, like if the content isn't good, it doesn't matter how many followers you have, no. right? Like the algorithm says kind of what it wants, and if the content isn't good, you're you're kind of screwed. So it's it's definitely, exhausting to keep up like that so, level yeah, of content yeah. and like to keep adapting and like finding those viral niches or those viral posts but like you said like you have to you have to be able to yeah. adapt and and you know give yourself a safety net and i think out of all the platforms like youtube is the most you know sustainable stable, yeah. And, yeah. and stable like yeah because like i don't know subscribers on youtube are worth a lot more than yeah. like tiktok followers which is tough but it's the game isn't it that's why yeah. i'm going pretty heavy on YouTube at the moment because I know this sort of, I wanna just start, share the stuff that two years ago, you at the start of your journey that you would watch because yeah. people that have been there, done that, made a load of mistakes and then apply that to, to whatever they're doing. And like, why don't you share a little bit about Juiced and how you're using those, not using that knowledge to, to help your business but then other businesses? Sure. So I started Puff Count and I launched the app and I thought it was a dope app. Like I yeah. thought it was the coolest thing ever. I knew it would help a ton of people, but like no one cared. No. So I tried doing paid ads. I tried doing influencer marketing and it all flopped. Like just no one understood how to make videos about the product. And no. I, I hadn't really like made videos like that. I was good at Twitter and like other social medias, but making videos was, was very new to me. Yeah. So and sorry, what year did Puff Count start? I think just this for was, reference. This was probably early 2020. Okay. So like right around COVID, S yeah, which was yeah. like sweet timing, right? Cause like everyone's on TikTok and it was just good timing. But I watched this Gary V video and he was like, get on TikTok. But before you get on TikTok, research your niche, right? Yeah, okay. And like watch content for a week and then start creating then and you'll have a much better opportunity at like going viral so that's exactly what i did i went on tiktok and i typed in you know quit vaping no nicotine all these hashtags and i watched all the content and i was like oh okay and you start to recognize themes a right pattern, yeah. yeah and you yeah, can yeah. do this with any business like you can search health supplements right and go on tiktok and see what the most viral videos are and then you learn yeah, all right yeah. this is what people want to watch so i did that research for a week and then i posted on tiktok first video was terrible flopped yeah. second video got eighty thousand views and it drove like four. second video second well. video and it was it, this was early days in tiktok right so like looking back it still is not the best video yeah, right yeah. but like eighty thousand views and i got like four thousand downloads and i was like holy shit like i'm on something here right yeah. like tiktok is real like yeah. and I, my four thousand downloads yeah bro it's crazy <laughs> This is this was early days, so like yeah. it was a way easier and like not a lot of people were doing, you know, yeah, promoting yeah. apps on TikTok yet. So the numbers were crazy, but it's not like that anymore. But no. it's a little bit tough. But um yeah, so I figured it out and like uh, you know, my friends were like, This is cringy, whatever it may be, but like dude, like I was like, This is I don't care. Yeah, right. Like the results are here. So I just kept posting and kept getting better and I committed to posting every single day. 
for like a month or two. Nice. And I posted every single day. Improving slightly every time, learning. Then you get really good. And then yeah. you're making a TikTok in two minutes, right? Yeah. Like some of the two minute, like I spent hours on a TikTok, it'll get 14 views. And then yeah. I spent two minutes on one to get 7 million, right? Like it's insane. But yeah, just taking as many swings as you can and yeah. you'll you'll figure it out. You, you learn your style and you learn what people like. And um, if you can crack the TikTok code for SaaS, like, yeah print money we did something similar we just researched when we were traveling through italy where we're going what were the most viral posts in the net in the last seven days then we compare it to the last three months we'd look at the hook we compare it to what we we were planning and we're like okay let's apply the most recent trends to the videos that went viral like three months ago 100 and the and where it was and that's what got this the viral video there was a really similar one we just did it better with a better hook and that's it doesn't take that much brain power. It it takes zero almost. Yeah. Like TikTok will tell you what to make. Yeah. Right? Like if your post gets a hundred views, like some people are like, oh, the algorithm shadow ban. It's like, no, your content's just bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So like do some market research. Savage. Right. <laughs> I hope my girlfriend doesn't watch this. <laughs> She's making all our videos at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. Sorry. <laughs> But um, yeah, like you said, like do some market research, go on the go on the filter, right? Filter by most viewed of all time. And then boom, you got yeah. your content, right? Like you got it. put them all in a spreadsheet, see what they're doing poorly, see what they're doing well. And then like you said, like grab the hooks, yeah. and make it your own content. Obviously don't copy people's content because that's, that's, I don't, I don't really, you know, really subscribe to yeah. that, but like use it as inspiration. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. And that's exactly what we do with our, we do with our clients at Juiced. And, you know, that's how I got started at Juice too. Was I built Puff Count to 120,000 followers on TikTok? You know, I think close to 100 million views now for an app as well. Yeah, for an app. It's not for like a a, an influencer. It's a business, it's a and business. people say that you can't grow business accounts on that. That is is not true if you get the positioning right. Yeah, and you just need persistence. Yeah, you just got to keep going, right? Like you'll find that niche for your business. And I'm at an advantage because you know vaping is a hot topic and like all these things, but you know your business has to be attractive it has to be yeah. marketable going back to you know the beginning of the combo but yeah so i built puff count to 120,000 followers like 100 million views uh 300,000 downloads all strictly organic zero dollars yeah, in ad spend crazy. and then brands you know started reaching out and they're like hey can you make content for us and i was like mm, maybe i don't know you're gonna pay me and they were like of course we'll pay you yeah and i was like oh sick i can get paid to make tiktoks for brands and that kind of naturally led me into the agency thing. And yeah, I, part yeah. I partnered with my buddy, Samay, who, uh, you know, I met in high school. Shout out, Samay. Shout out, Samay, my co-founder, my boy. Um, and uh, we started Juice Media, bro. And in the beginning, it was just me and him. I yeah. was making content for one brand and then two brands and then three brands. And, you know, they were seeing similar success. And it just uh, kind of snowballed. But, um, yeah, man, I... I it got to a point where I was making TikToks for five different brands every single day. Yeah. And dude, I was creatively like burnt. Burn, I was like, bro, I can't do this anymore. So then that kind of shifted my role into like finding good people, finding great talent, yeah, hiring yeah. creators, hiring an account manager, a strategist, a sales guy, a lead gen guy, uh, finding, you know, creators for every brand we're working with. Like, and that's kind of what my, my role has evolved into. We've been doing juice for, a year a year and a half now and like i'm only focused on finding good people to work now i don't yeah. do the day-to-day -day. i don't make tiktoks anymore no. i don't do sales i don't do lead gen building the best team surrounding yeah. yourself with people better than you is, is the is the key really exactly and i believe everyone on my team is better than me at what they do yeah yeah i'm i'm really similar and i'm very lucky and people people think that a lot of that is like luck or and part of it is luck but it's about you can get an extremely talented person and in the right environment, in the wrong environment, the wrong support, they'll be your worst employee and you'll fire them. And I've had it recently with um, my head of ops. You know, we were getting frustrated, both of us. It wasn't working out. She wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. And I reviewed the situation with my coach and I was like, how can I, how can I improve this? And it's very easy for me to be pointing the finger at her saying, right. you're, you're doing this wrong, you're not doing this. Actually, it's it's me as a leader of the organization exactly. to figure out how can I get the best? How can I allow her to be the best version of her she can be? I remember a chat yesterday and she was like, I'm so happy the switch over the past two months. But that's purely from how we've approached things differently. 
Yeah, I mean, you have to work with your employees, right? Yeah. Like, and that's the hard part as a business owner, as you know, like your wins are your team's wins. But yeah, your losses yeah. are on you. Like yeah, as yeah. a business owner, you have to take that responsibility and like it is on you at the end of the day, yeah. like you said. Um, but no, 100% I'm on the same page. Like um, we had one creator, we had one employee, Vanya, who's like, she's the boss of the company for, let's yeah. be real. Like she, she tells me what to do at this point, but we brought her on as a creator yeah cool. and uh the content just wasn't hitting like whatever but like i recognize how organized she was and like how on top of everything she was and like that is her skill set yeah like she's super creative but also at the same time very organized and like communicates yeah better than anyone so we shifted her from a creator to an account manager and now she's like our executive account manager she absolutely crushes it bro without her in the company like juice would not exist. would not be where it, yeah so like you have to be willing to I always hear like hire fast, fire faster, which, you know, I agree with, but at the same time, like you have to be able to, as a business owner, like recognize people's strengths yeah, yeah. and put them 100%. in the right spot. You gotta be a coach. 100%. You are a coach of the people working with you. Right. And like the best coaches as well that I've worked with ask the best questions and like putting it on them to help you solve the situation you both in is like one of the biggest switches that I made. Right like always asking questions first whether it, even in sales calls you know it's always asking questions first team asking questions absolutely because the moment you assume that you're the smartest person in the room you, you're already a step behind exactly bro. you're already a step behind i like to assume nothing yeah you know and like i always tell my team like if you guys have any ideas at all whatever they are like float them by you know float the float them by yeah. me like i'm down to try anything out like whatever you see that isn't working in the business like tell me that tell me how I can make your job as easy as possible yeah so we can all grow the company together right because like you have to it's it's crazy you have to like let go of the reins for a little bit which is hard yeah, right yeah. and like you're like oh I would have done that better and like I would have created that piece of content better but you realize that like if you're controlling everything you become the bottleneck yeah. and you can't scale how did you overcome because you mentioned earlier that you got stung in a couple of business partnerships how do you approach like how do you approach overcoming those certain things? Do you have a coach? Do you have people there that are supporting you that you ask for advice? What What's that look like? 100%. So when we first started the agency, uh, we were like three months in, decently successful. I think we were at like 20K a month or something like that. Um, and I, you just see all these problems like coming at you and you're like, oh, this is, I see that, you know, I don't really have knowledge here, there and there. So I bought Iman Gazi's Apex. Okay. Uh, yeah course or his group yeah. or whatever and, and for context this is being filmed like a couple days after the gcc rug pull oh shit. so uh that's a completely different story i didn't get into gcc but um no his apex course is, is incredible man so you know we were three months into the agency we we're at yeah. 20k and i was like all right like this is working i can see myself doing this we're making enough money right now and like i want to take this to the next level nice. but like i don't necessarily have the knowledge and no. you know i've learned so much from youtube but like i have direct questions that i want to ask yeah, yeah people who have done this before in the past right and like you always you know try to reach out to people who are like 10 steps ahead of you of course yeah. like ask some questions so his course was eight grand and this was like a hard decision at the time for a big, my big ticket right myself and my co-founder were like yo 8k like is this going to be worth it but we took the leap and bro i think we made our money back in like 12 seconds yeah. <laughs> like seriously bro like the first couple meetings we had we just asked these questions and they were like yeah no do this there's pitfalls here yeah don't do that do this that way and we're like oh shit and like you, you don't know until you know and then it clicks and you're like why did we you, yeah that's yeah. why so you're just asking someone who's done it before and they're like they tell you to avoid the pitfalls and they tell you what to do and what they've tried in the past and like you apply it to your own yeah. business and like bro that took us to the next level i think you know we were at like 20k and then we jumped to like 60 or 80 in like a matter of months bro it's yeah. crazy but just like that knowledge knowledge is power i wish there was more stuff for that for, for sas there's actually a, a meetup in so we're at nebula um co-working space in bali and every thursday they have a sas meetup and i wish there was more stuff like that because the principles aren't as transfer you know the team stuff is transferable right. but i feel like the technicals of sas one thing example that I think of is product like it's vet product on, around SaaS and how to make like at that 11 star experience yeah. I feel like it's quite specialized to the SaaS world 100%. someone that's good at that may it's hard to get them elsewhere those are tough yeah 
those are really tough because each SaaS product is unique, right? Like in in the agency world, it's kind of all very similar. It's all service based. It's all it's more it's more relationship. Yeah, right. It's relationship with the clients, but like SaaS is your product. Yeah, you're not you're not convincing people to stay on your SaaS. Like if the product doesn't work, they're gonna leave. How do you approach building that like incredible product and an incredible experience? User feedback. Yeah. Always like relentlessly talk to your users, listen to them. What do you like? What do you not like? What's your favorite, least favorite part about the product and implement that feedback. The, right? the cool thing with you is like so many people are vaping now. <laughs> you can literally yeah. like you can be in the smoking area of like a bar, a club, a restaurant, any situation and someone's vaping now and you can just ask them. Yeah. And I ask everyone all the time. I'm like, Hey, download my app. And they all ask me the same question. They're like, how does it work? And I'm like, Oh, you open the app and you press puff. And they're like, Oh, well, that sucks. And like, I'm like, yeah, I know. So like, yeah, you get like over time, if you ask enough users, what they think about your product, they're, you're going to recognize like these yeah, themes yeah. and that's the direction that you take your product, right? Like you ask enough people, you probably don't even have to ask that many. You ask 20 people and you're going to recognize yeah, themes yeah. and like where to push your product. You just follow that. That themes is the important thing because we we were having a, a chat in, in my team recently and we were we, we were essentially all getting feedback from I was doing the calls the team was going through the recording and then we were like making product changes instantly and I was like well first of all how we've done it now is like if three people say something we categorize it. if three people say it yeah. that's when it gets moved up in priority right. we'll look at the um, the time impact that that product change or feature will have 100%. and then the effort that it takes to do and then prioritize it accordingly so like because otherwise it can be too easy to pinball exactly. between different things it's important to get that consensus that theme and yeah. then go you get shiny object sy- syndrome and like massively it, new features doesn't necessarily help your product no it's in no. like sometimes that's hard right because you do have to recognize like all right users are saying this but like that's not really what's going to push the product in the right direction no. so you you do have to kind of have your own like opinion on on what to build to yeah. it's 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 tough well an example is um word all right right because you you were at a stage where yeah a couple of downloads a day no one was really using it you didn't change anything on the product nothing it was it was what was going on with josh wordle that popped it off but you can have similar examples right where tweaks that you you think aren't going to make a big difference that is what blows it up 100%. messaging for us is quite a big one as well yeah messaging on the pricing page like someone someone was saying oh i didn't realize you could use this on unlimited websites had i known that would have paid right now as is only ten dollars ten to twenty five dollars a month that isn't a big ticket for me i would probably just try it out for the ten dollars right. but that's not how people work that messaging that came from learning and speaking to customers. That's ultimately how we made that tweak. Yeah, and it's hard, right? Like you have to be in the user's mind. And when you're building the product and you're so close to the product, you you don't see those things, no. right? So it's it's always important to like get a coach or ask your customers like, what are you seeing that I'm not? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, there's a massive typo on the header of your website. But because yeah. you've looked at it 4,000 times, you don't even recognize that, right? Jargon's a big one as well. Yeah. Like we use our own jargon. Right. And you forget that normal people don't don't speak like that. They don't, they don't exactly. care. You have to explain things like people are five years old. I've come to find out. Like if you don't break things down like in super simple terms, they're not going to get it. Yeah. Because if you think about how someone scrolls a website or looks at a product, they do this. They don't read every... No. <laughs> every word and like read all the pricing stuff so you have to make it very apparent and you have to make it you know quick and easy yeah. digestible you'll be good to go I, I recommend anyone that I don't know if you can do it on mobile apps but we have um, also do you need the toilet or anything you good to go I'm chilling you're good perfect um, so I don't know if you can do it on mobile apps but we have um, on our dashboard we have uh, Microsoft Clarity installed so we can see screen recordings of every single one of our customers using the product. Smart, it blurs out personal information, so we can't see like, when I said that to a customer, they're like, shit, can you see it? Like entering the <laughs> right. entering our payment details. We, we can't see any of that, but from literally zero to one, yeah. we can see what they're doing. Smart. And you'll see people go through the onboarding flow, next, 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 next. They don't care. They don't, they don't look at it, they do, there's like a video of me, 60 seconds, and it tells them everything they need to know. <laughs> I reckon 20% of people watch that. Yeah. And probably not every one of those finishes it. It's got to be, unless it is like one option, simple, it just spells it out exactly what to do while they're using it. 
a friend, it um, be interesting to get your thoughts on this, a friend that I spoke to the other day, he said that s software businesses are actually customer service businesses. Right. Because of all the things that users will do that is wrong. Have you experienced that? And how do you approach that customer service side? Yeah, um, it's super interesting. It's, it's tough on the mobile apps, right? You just keep, people can't really get directly in, co no. in contact with you. They have to email you or fill out a form. And a lot of times people don't do that. Yeah. They like they, they leave bad reviews and um, it's tougher to get in touch with people who are using mobile apps. But like as a customer of many SaaS products, like I'm constantly on support. Like, hey, yeah, like, yeah. this doesn't work. Like, what's up? And I think, you know, customer feedback is or customer support is huge. Like you have to be able to get back to people Definitely. fast or like they're, they're just going to ditch your product. Yeah. Like instantly. We've got a community, so hopefully it'll be self-serve eventually because you can just search, you can find people right. that have had problems before. But it's something that I'm definitely not going to get right with our launch. Like, do we have a dedicated customer service person? Right. Do we, it's very, very difficult. But that's again, one of the reasons I want to do YouTube and I do probably, it's going to move to like 70% SaaS content, 30% SEO and Squarespace stuff. Right. Because there's all those resources then that people can, can look at yeah no having a community is huge and that'll that'll yeah. definitely help you out and for you like do you have a, a mission at buff count and how how do you utilize technology to get closer to that mission yeah so my mission at puff count is just help the world be healthier yeah help as many people quit vaping as i can um, my goal is to hit a million downloads this year which uh That's hopefully cool. we'll be able to hit TikTok just needs to pull its finger out and yeah, sort the algorithm. Exactly, exactly. So that's kind of my goal. But no, man, I just want to make I want to make a big impact and um, yeah, help people live healthier lives. And if I can make money while I'm doing that, that's that's Amazing. great, man. And and for people watching this, what would you? So let's say there's people that are looking to get into SaaS or maybe even like get into the agency game. They yeah. love TikTok and they wanna they wanna go away and they wanna have some actions. Right. What would you recommend to them? Maybe start off with the SaaS and then go to the agency. Yeah, I mean, whatever your skill set is, right? Like, whatever you're good at now, see how you can turn that into a business. For me, the, the reason I got into the agency biz was because I was good at TikTok. And I was, you know, promoting my mobile apps. And that was a skill set that people were willing to pay for. Yeah. So, like, what is that for you? Figure it out and then turn it into a product, right? Yeah. And, like, I think that's all you need. And you can always, like, take courses and, like, you know, try to you know, do as much research as you possibly can. But at the end of the day, if you're not doing it, you're not going to learn. Yeah. You can read as many sales books as you want, but if you're not doing sales while you're reading the books, like, no, you're not gonna learn anything. F for me, it was like, I'm, I'm good at getting businesses on page one, position one of Google. And then when I was doing the Squarespace side, that's where I identified. So I agree, like go all in on your strengths. Cause yeah. we're often like programmed at school to like work on our weaknesses when you didn't, when I was getting low scores on my maths test, you weren't, you were getting 10 out of 10 every yeah. time. When <laughs> I was getting like, say six out of 10, you always look at that four and you think, shit, I need to get that four right. But actually focusing on the six in the business world and honing in on that strength, that superpower. And you're absolutely right, man. Like school doesn't teach you necessarily how to build a business. No. Like school teaches you the exact opposite. It teaches you how to be an employee and like how to, I don't know, do all these things and like study or whatever. But that's what I realized like early on. I was like, all right, I don't want to be an employee. Like I want to run my own business. Like I want to focus on these things. And you know, so that's why I outsourced all my school. Yeah. It was like, I'm wasting money, spending time doing homework. I'm going to outsource it and instead spend that time building my businesses, which is, you know, served me to this day. And like yeah. now it's put me where I'm at because I put in that work when I was, when I was younger and I knew what I wanted which I'm blessed, you know, to, to, to know that at such an early age, but, um, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. We are in super lucky position. So we'll, um, you know, we're, we're in Bali at the moment. Yeah. So like that by itself, we actually spoke about it as speaking to your friend Hayden, like a lot of our friends are, are sitting back home in doing the same job, doing the same thing. A lot of people from my hometown are like going out every weekend doing, doing Coke, <laughs> in that revolving door of yeah. living for the weekend and it we are in a very fortunate position that we are able to be where we are um doesn't mean that everything is right uh, like sunshine and rainbows it right. definitely isn't everyone has their own stuff going on what would you recommend to like get out of that yeah well i mean i think the first step is 
not really getting out of it, if that makes, and it sounds like counterintuitive, but, you know, working a job, working a nine to five is like, it's, it's great, right? Like I had a nine to five before I started the agency, before I, you know, started Puff, or got, had success with Puff Count. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five. Like, I think it's necessary as you're starting a business, right? Because like, if you drop out of school or you quit your job and you're not solid in the business that you're building and you don't yeah. have that income that you can rely on or you don't have a safety net or whatever it is you're gonna get desperate yeah like, of course if you need to make money with your business and you're kind of stressing out about it you're gonna make poor decisions you're gonna be yeah. stressed but if you're like if you have something going on you have a nine to five you have a safety net whatever it is or you're living at home whatever it may be like you're able to kind of take it slow make the right moves do things for the do things for the long term instead yeah. of that short-term gain right so, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's okay to like, you know, be chilling at home and like working a job or whatever, just like after the nine to five, what's your five to nine? Yeah. yeah. What are you working on after your job? Are you going home and watching Netflix or are you working in your business? You watching YouTube videos, learning how to code, learning how to build a SaaS, whatever it is like, but you have to be doing that afterwards. And the cool thing about working a job is it'll teach you really good skills. Definitely. Like I worked a nine to five at an uh, affiliate marketing agency. And I saw how they built the agency and they yeah, yeah. promoted me to a manager uh, like six months in and I started managing people. And yeah. those skills served me, you know, immensely well when building my agency because I, like I had done it yeah. already for like a massive company. So, um, yeah, I think it's just about like knowing what you want and taking that leap of faith. Like once you're ready, once your business is like where you want it to be and you're confident that you can keep it going and this is what you want to do, take that leap of faith, quit yeah. the job. I, I like journey similar in that sense. We both got a degree. We both, I then worked for a year. Mum yeah. was like in my third year of university and then I went back. And I would agree that like sometimes in, sometimes in the world where we're in there's so much pressure, like go and start your own business, go and do X, X Y, and Z. And I'm like, no, get experience, mm -hmm. develop skills and bring something to the situation that you go into. Cause you're just gonna burn yourself if you go straight into straight into like trying to start something or you're going to provide no one value 100 percent, man like you have to be i think the most important thing of being successful in business is staying in business yeah if you start yeah, an yeah. if you start an agency and month two you're out of money and like you have to go like you're fucked yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like you have to be able to yeah. take it for the long haul because very rarely do you see success overnight no i built wordle eight years ago and only saw success a year ago. Like yeah. it takes time. And with the agency, it takes months and months and months to build that and with puff count it took close to like six months to get that off the ground. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it takes time. So yeah, you just have to be confident. You have to be in a good place to be able to like do that fully yeah. without a safety net. And that's so true in SAS as well, because you're not going to be able to like with an agency, you can like develop a skill and you can start pr pretty quickly. Right. But with SaaS, like there is going to be that period where you're building, you are going to need to have income, and that's what I said to the um, developers in like one of my previous videos. Start talking to customers and focus on the sales and marketing. Absolutely. Because if you're just, let's say, you're in a software job and your five to nine is building an app on the side, you're never going to get out of that situation just by writing loads of lines of code. Right. Um, I'd also like add to that. It's then in that five to nine who you spend your time with. If you're surrounding yourself if you really want to like be successful in this game and you're surrounding yourself by people who don't understand it hold you back are drawing you towards negative influences in life you're watching porn you're doing all these things which are going to be messing with your head again you you might get initial success but that's sustainable just isn't going to happen you have to have your personal life in order yeah. right because like all the flaws of your business the your personal flaws will come out in the yeah, business definitely. that you're building Right? because it's you <laughs> yeah like you're running the business so if you're struggling with you know you have bad sleep you don't go to the gym you have unhealthy habits those are going to show in your business and your business is going to suffer for it yeah so you have to have your personal stuff in order for sure how do you correct yourself in that situation like when maybe give an example of when you've gone too far and how did you bring yourself back yeah uh i mean when i started puff count i was still in college and i was partying and going out and stuff and that's probably why it took so long to get it off the ground right yeah yeah it's hard to, you know, sustain growth or, you know, build your business when you're getting fucked up every night yeah, or like yeah. you're out partying and you have to, or you even have to study and stuff like this. Yeah. So it's just about building healthy habits 
and uh, having a routine. Having a routine is good, especially yeah. as an entrepreneur, because you don't have to clock into work. No, you can kind of no. do whatever, no. right? So it's like you have to be self-sustainable. You have to hold yourself accountable. And like you said, like build a strong network of people that will hold you accountable and people that you can look up to. Yeah, yeah. Um, people that you can talk to day in, day out about it because being an entrepreneur is the hardest job in the world. Definitely. You know, you, you quit your nine to five and like, yeah. you you end up working from seven to yeah, yeah. seven. Like it's yeah, crazy, yeah. man. Like It's 24 seven in so many ways. Like it's always in your head, right. especially when you got a team and you're putting, I'm, I'm putting food on their table sort of thing. That right. is a, sca a scary thought. It's scary, but it's so fulfilling, man. Yeah. It's so fulfilling. I remember one guy on my team, he, he shot me a message. We brought him on full time and he was like, bro, like, uh, well, this is before we brought him on full time, but he shot me a message. He's like, bro, like I've wanted to quit this job for the longest time. And like, I'm one step closer to doing that. Like, thank you. And yeah. I was like, dude, like that meant the most to me. Yeah. Like forget the monthly income or whatever. Like that means the most, like yeah. having a team, having those people that believe in you, that support you yeah. and uh, building a vision together. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. With my head of ops, like when she, she like spoke about how she believed in the direction that we're going and how she was excited. Like sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, you're so like in your own head and in your own bubble to realize like that, to have that, those other people support you and willing to like, you know, go into war, that war that is business. Right. It's, it is super cool. And the soft, again, where it also works with customers in the SaaS, like the fact that I've got people that I can sit on like a two hour call with and do user testing. Right. Like random people that I never would have met, a lot of them in the States. That is a, a crazy thought. It's a crazy thought, but it's, it, it's, it's super cool and su super, as you said, blessed to be in that situation. Um, What's next for, for Steven and how can people that are watching this video find you? Yeah, what's next, man? Great question. I'm just, uh, dude, I'm enjoying life. I feel like I'm, I'm living my dream life. You know, I'm, I'm building my own stuff, building apps, yeah. working on my agency. I have a great team who supports me. I'm able to come to Bali and kind of, you know, step back a little bit, take a little vacation. My team still works. So, dude, I'm super blessed to be in this position. I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm proud uh, of myself and my team. What's next is, dude, keep keep pushing, yeah. go to the next level, get the agency, and you know, continue to build out the team, take it to the next level, and uh, definitely want to build a SaaS type product for the agency too, which I'll oh, okay. maybe the next pod we'll talk about that yeah, when, yeah, when yeah, it's launched. Cool. Um, but yeah, man, keep pushing Puff Count, take Puff Count to the next level, build out hardware that makes it the user experience a little bit easier, yeah, and course, uh, yeah. yeah, man, see if I can get another exit, retire early. Yeah, mate. But would you retire early? <laughs> no, I no. no, absolutely not. Dude, I love this game, bro. Yeah, I love, that's what I thought. I love building yeah. businesses and like, you know, we spoke earlier, but like you, you end up working more hours, but it doesn't feel like work. No. Because you love it. No. And like, it just, it feels like it's just your day to day. It takes like, if, if for anyone that's got this far in the pod, first of all, thank you. But also like, it takes you definitely want to follow along with what Steven's doing because it takes one mindset to be able to get one win, yeah. to then be persistent and then go for the next one and look to build on top of that. You have to have a different mindset. You, it's it's that relentless pursuit to that greater greater thing. And while we've been drawn to SaaS, it's probably because of the impact that it can have. Yeah, it's it's not about the money. like. It has never been about the money for me. It's more so like I love this game and I love make, uh, providing that impact and like helping people. Like that's that's what it's yeah. about for me. It's more about the feedback and like yeah. users saying, oh, you helped me quit vaping or my employee saying, oh, I quit my job. Like, thank you. Like, that's what it's about. Yeah. The money is just allows me to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if, if we were just in it for money, we'd do like crypto well, <laughs> trading. We do trading full time. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like for me, that would just be so fulfilling. And often this might trigger a couple of people. Like sometimes you speak to those crypto people and you're like, but you've got no story. Yeah. There's nothing there that's like, right. where's that spark? Where's that like the interesting thing about speaking to people? The money doesn't go with you, man. No. You, life is short. It's about your relationships and the impact you have and, and your legacy. And, you know, like we said at the beginning, like you can, you can impact so many people. You don't have yeah. to be an influence you don't have to be someone famous you don't have to be you know an, an artist whatever it may be you can build a piece of software or a business and yeah. impact just as many people millions and millions yeah. of people like you just have to know what you want um and provide value where where it's needed and help people what a way to 
to wrap things up. Yeah, man. Cheers for coming along, mate. Absolute pleasure. You can find me on Instagram at Stephen Cravada or Twitter at Stephen Cravada. Um, yeah, check it out, dude. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank Cheers, you for having mate. me on. We should. Um, so I'm heading over to the states in August, and we should like do do another catch up there. Down. I'm we down. can talk the that other SaaS that you're potentially building. I would have launched my SaaS. Hell yeah. Just gone to a conference for it as well. So it'd be exciting, more exciting times for both of us. I'm and down, like man. again in another part of the world. So absolutely, brother. Let's do it. Crazy, mate. LA, LA pod. Yeah, uh, right, bro. LA pod. Sweet. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.